Am I the asshole for making my daughter sleep in a tent? I, 34 female, am a single mother to two girls, Jasmine, 16 female, and Jessica, 14 female. Their dad died when I was pregnant with Jess and I had to work hard. We hit rock bottom and I was barely making it paycheck to paycheck, but I managed to get a degree, become successful, and we do live well. My point is, I know how effing hard it is to be at the bottom of society, and my daughters know this, which is why I was livid at my daughter's actions. Yesterday, Jasmine showed me a video of Jessica cussing out a homeless man and telling him, quote unquote, stop asking me for money. You'd earn it yourself if you weren't so effing lazy and spending what you earned on substances. When the homeless man complained about the cold, we live in Northeast England. Jessica responded, yeah, people camp for fun. Even in December, you can't complain you're living someone's holiday. Fury was an understatement for what I felt as I thought I had raised an empathetic daughter. Along with finding the homeless man and making her apologize and help pay for a hotel room for a night for him, she paid 20 pounds as well as signing her up to volunteer at a food bank I decided to take her up on her offer of sleeping outside. I locked her bedroom door so she couldn't get in. I put a sign on it saying, closed for the holidays. I pitched a tent in the garden and filled it with blankets and the sleeping bag I used when I was camping in Norway on a family holiday as a teen, AKA really bloody thermal. I slept in the room closet to give the garden for the night so I was nearby if anything was to go wrong. She was reluctant to do it, but chose it over the option of not having access to her phone until the Christmas holidays were over. The next morning, she was crying about how horrible it was to wake up on a cold mat and get disrupted sleep due to the birds. After comforting her, I asked her, would she still like to do that every day like the homeless It struck a chord with her and she was crying over her actions. While even after the 20 pounds, she was rolling her eyes and her apology was not sincere. This afternoon, I came home from work to Jessica making a big meal to donate to the homeless people who live on the road near our house. I was proud of how she turned over a new leaf. And after taking the food to the people, my sister came over. Apparently, my nephew and Jessica were talking at school and he asked her about her plans for the afternoon. And she said that she was going to cook for the homeless. My nephew asked what triggered that and Jess told him everything, which he relayed back to his mom. My sister said that my punishment was way too harsh and just the 20 pounds and the food bank would have done the trick and I was acting irrationally due to my past. Now I'm second guessing myself. Am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for making a wall of shame for people who stole from my mom's garden? My mom is really into gardening and sometimes people have come by and taken potted plants, yard statues, and even dug whole plant bulbs with plants out of our ground or cut all the roses off her bushes because they were too cheap to buy from the florist, I guess. Anyway, my dash cam of my car, which I park in the driveway near the garden bed, caught most all of them up close And as a way to help my mom not have her plants stolen, I printed all their pictures out and made a poster that said, oh, hey there, don't be a daffodil and steal or else you might end up doing hard thyme. We hope this'll be a lesson to you. 
and I put the pictures of everyone stealing from the garden around the border. Also, gave each person a funny fake name. Mr. Potato Head, Dilettante, Pothead, Prick, Sucker, I Puny My Pants, Frondless, Dirtbag, Infertile, and Root Boy. I got a couple complaints. One neighbor said I needed to take it down because I had a picture of his son, who is a minor, who did something dumb, yes, but was just trying to bring his sick girlfriend flowers, and that it was inappropriate and rude to publicly shame him. Another guy came forward and returned a potted plant that his wife stole, and I guess the two families know each other. So... Everyone's annoyed with me now, but am I the asshole for the wall of shame? Am I the asshole for giving my deceased son's college fund to his best friend instead of my nephew? This has been causing a lot of conflict with my entire family, and they think that I'm being selfish and unreasonable. Let me explain first. I, 39 male, lost my son in 2019 due to a chronic heart condition. He was 15 years old. It was devastating and I just couldn't take it, especially when my family did little to nothing to support me during these difficult times. They didn't bring my son meals when he was at the hospital. They didn't let me go home and rest even for a few hours they didn't take care of other things while i had a lot to deal with i wasn't offered any help just words they would talk but do nothing despite the struggle i've created an account for my son's college fund and kept putting whatever i could get at the time and me and my son would talk about that a lot he was depressed, but always believed that he was going to get better and continue his education and attend college. I started saving money to keep him motivated and to make him feel like he could be like any other kid with hopes for a good future. He had a very close friend that's about the same age as him. They were friends for five years and I can't express how his presence in my son's life helped him through the worst days. Sometimes his friend would spend the night with us and try to get my son to do activities and lighten up his mood all the time. To be frank, his friend was closer to him than his own family. He never stopped visiting and asking how I'm doing after my son's death. He'd show me handmade projects he had made for my son and as a way to remember him. And we'd sometimes just sit and talk or just cry together. Last week, while I was with my family, my sister asked me what I was going to be doing with my son's college money. I didn't want to mention this, but since she asked, I told her that I would be giving to the money to my son's friend. She barely even recognized was his confused friend. and said that my nephew deserves this money since he's family. My mom agreed that I wasn't thinking straight and that I should help the people close to me family and that my nephew has a right to go to college and i was wrong for giving this quote-unquote opportunity away to someone else i didn't know what to say they kept pointing out that i was making a mistake and how my nephew will resent me if he finds out the thing is my nephew wasn't close to my son I don't even know why he'd be bothered. My sister went on about not being able to afford my nephew's college. I told her this was my decision and I felt more comfortable that way. She started lashing out, constantly texting me, constantly wanting to talk to me and ending up arguing. When I snapped, she had my mom calling me 
basically guilt tripping me and telling me I'm wrong and that I needed to think about this. It's just too much pressure and I'm feeling lost and unable to figure out how to deal with this. So am I the asshole for giving my deceased son's college fund to his best friend instead of my nephew? Am I the asshole for being honest about how I was bullied and how the teachers at my school did nothing about it while being interviewed by a current student? I'm an author of mild success. I'm not incredibly popular, but my books sell enough. About three months ago, someone from my old high school reached out to see if a student could interview me. I responded that my time at the high school wasn't the happiest, but I would give the student responses relating to my career. We had a great chat. She started asking questions about my time at the school, but I redirected. She caught on to what I was doing and asked, I'm sensing that you're hesitant to talk about your time at school. Is that true? I said, let's focus on the story. And she was like, actually, this could be a better story. So I said, you know what? Sure, whatever. I don't owe the school anything. I'm not being paid. And even though it's been a long time and I've grown from what happened, it's still worth talking about. I mentioned a few names in specific, how I tried to ask for help and was blown off by everyone. Teachers at my school very strongly favored the girls in sports teams and would often be buddy-buddy with them and their parents. I mentioned a teacher who openly mocked the way I dressed, my lack of athleticism, etc. I brought up the time that a group of girls followed me around the school mooing at me and when I broke down crying because... They wouldn't stop and tried to tell a teacher. The teacher called me Mooly for the rest of the year. And when I yelled, my name is Molly, Molly. She had me suspended for a week. She ended up publishing the whole interview. Nothing exactly went viral, but there were posts on Facebook with a ton of comments and it caused some commotion in that community. A few weeks later, I was contacted by a school official who chastised me for bringing up old wounds and trying to paint veteran teachers as bad people when they were going through difficult times already. The teacher responsible for the Mooley incident had a local lifetime teaching award taken away from her after it all came out. So was it really worth it? And maybe did I remember things wrong? Finally, a handful of my old classmates, many of them stuck around town, found me and I was barraged with a ton of messages telling me that I'm ruining the reputation of the school and of several prominent community members. It was 10 years ago, so why can't I just get over it, etc. Some of them obviously haven't changed. It was a long time ago, yes. I don't know how I really feel about how this all went down, though. I know times are tough for teachers right now. I didn't set out to hurt anyone. I was just telling my truth. So, am I the asshole?